Live from San Jose, California, it's The Cube at the Adaptive Flash Launch. Brought to you by Nimble Storage. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live in Silicon Valley in San Jose. This is uh, theCUBE where we go out and extract the signal from the noise. We're here for the exclusive launch for Nimble, Nimble Storage. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. Our next guest is Shiresh Vatsu Devan, CEO of Nimble Storage. Welcome back uh, to theCUBE and good to see you. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, an exclusive product launch, really intimate but really powerful presentation. Um, you're up on stage. You want to get into the details quickly, but uh, I want to ask, talk about the culture of your company because your success story, you are, you're growing fast, you've got great numbers, great product technology, which we'll talk about, but you're building a durable company. So talk about the culture of Nimble, because <laughs> this is really the Silicon Valley story. Indeed, very much so. I think when I describe what Nimble's aspiring to do, I always describe it as one side of the coin is about the business that we are building, and the other side of the coin is about the organization we are building. And so there are many attributes to that organization. First and foremost is the set of values that our employees embrace. We go to great lengths to focus on that. Some of the precepts that we've adopted are things like, we would rather not hire a superstar if that person does not know how to be collaborative with everything else. For us, having no jerks in the company is paramount. Yeah, and, and communication is really important. Things. And it's a durable company, and you have a marketplace that values you. It's very, it iterates very quickly. <laughs> it's about the performance, unlike the private market right now, where it's a lot of valuation fluctuations. There's not a lot of mar market trading going on. So it's a private market, value, but, but the valuations are massive, huge. What, talk about that, and, and does that confuse customers? You know, I have to say, um, first off, the variety of choices that a customer has is uh, never been great. Whether it's storage, whether it's security, but in storage specifically there are 40 to 50 startups in just the last three or four years, more than I, I remember at any point in time in my two decade long career in stores, right? So that's the first thing. So it is certainly confusing. The one thing that I would also say is we're going through a phase where increasingly of the 50, there'll be five surviving. I don't believe there'll be 50 successful store startups. What was confusing as well is over the last year and a half, the market was valuing growth over everything else, and so you started to see a phenomenon of companies investing in a manner where it was growth at all costs. I think slowly the markets are coming back to what you need is a disciplined business model where you're delivering hyper growth, combined with improving operating leverage, combined with a sustainable business model, which we've always held dear, and so to some degree I think we're seeing benefits of that. Let's talk about where you guys are right now, the product launch here today. You guys are classically skated. You are where the puck is right now. You've got a great market entry, the mainstream adoption of Flash, where the pressure for performance and agile and adaptive capability is really critical. Now you have a bigger opportunity. So let's talk about what you launched here today in Silicon Valley. Indeed, so uh, specifically the, the announcement itself had two components to what we launched, right? So uh, if I step back from that, let me start with our architecture. Our architecture was always informed by the belief that performance and capacity are both important and it depends very much on the workload you're addressing. A customer that has hundreds of workloads will want some applications to have absolutely flash-like latencies all the time. Other applications to have this like cost structure all the time, and many in the middle that require a blend of performance and capacity. And so the architecture we built was about saying, depending on the workload, you should flexibly be able to deliver any of those attributes. What we announced today was a high-end version of our platform that in a small 3U appliance with 12 disk drives, 4 um, solid state drives, 4 flash drives, can deliver up to 125,000 IOPS. When you take four of those systems and combine them into a scale-out cluster, you get half a million IOPS. That is performing performance rivaling that of mainstream flash arrays in the market next week. At the other extreme though, you can also take those same four systems and configure them in a capacity that exceeds a petabyte at extremely cost-effective price point. So it is the broadest, uh, the breadth of the platform in being able to address any workload is really what we brought to bear today. So, Suresh, first of all, congratulations on the launch. Your, your team here is really excited. It's nice to see four locations uh, across the U.S. Um, and 
I was wondering if we could unpack a little bit for our our logic here. Uh, some of the architectural decisions, because obviously, you know, not everybody is going to fit in every environment. Indeed. Um, you know, the, the hybrid flat array is what we call kind of the fat middle of the market. <laughs> uh, and you guys are pushing down with capacity, you're pushing it up with performance. Uh, you know, question number one is, you know, so I'm moving right down the road. You know, where do you guys fit? So we did get all the flat array. You're not in all flat array. You've got an all flat rack. So we downtown. Why don't you? Yeah, that's a great question. So let me take a couple of minutes. Of so let's go behind the notion of an all flash array. I just scrolled for the first time. There are two aspects to what a customer wants when they find the one and all flash array. One is what I described as a big kind of lineup. How many hundreds of thousands of lineups are there? Second, is consistency in all the performance experience, which is negative and deterministic latency in my application. So let's, we need to design our customers to have one core elements to our architecture that differentiates from everybody else. The first element of our architecture is in delivering random write permissions. The way that we deliver random write performance is very different from the in this case, it's an approach of saying random bytes are coming into your system. We're going to use Flash to absorb those random bytes. And then we're going to, uh, in a cleared system, they might get the data back. And we're just right in the Flash only system, we'll keep it on Flash. That's one place where we're very different. Instead of using Flash to absorb incoming bytes, what we do is translate random IO into what looks like sequential IO. So the first thing we're able to do is to do is to do about 10,000 random bytes or random bytes or random this drive, which is more than the right I.O. performance of the flash drive that's actually good. Right? So we step back and say, this is now solve the ability to deliver low latency and high right I.O. performance using this stuff. What we now need to worry about is how do we then go to low latency in the application. Because all our rights are now solved with this, we can afford to think about flash as a real cash. If you want 90% of your IOs to have a very low read latency, then you can figure a certain amount of flash. But if you have an application where you want all of our IOs to always have flash read latency, then you can figure a much larger amount of flash so that the data looks in flash. So if I step back in a nutshell, by delivering my right so I can using this drive that exceeds that of a flash drive, by having a variable cache that can deliver any experience you want, all the time flash experience or a blended hybrid experience, we really address the same needs that a customer has for flash drive. Yeah, so, you guys think so, the so I, I guess if I reflect back to you, you know, I, I think your marketing message is you get the performance of an all flash array with the, the price of a hybrid. So in the future, I mean, can Castle Architecture, could it be an all flash? Indeed. Uh, device or Indeed. So I think the way we think about that is there is one fundamental must-have for us to contemplate making flash of persistence layer rather than thinking about it as both distant. The must-have is will the price of flash come down roughly to about three to four x the price of high density drives without compromising convenience. That's the key uh, sort of uh, condition, if you will. What we've seen in the past is price of flash coming down mostly by trading off endurance, if you will, a right cycle for cost. We can get the MLC-like endurance levels that we're used to today and a price that drops from the 15 to 20x premium today to about 3x premium, then our architecture castle has been designed to say we don't, we have underneath a single file system umbrella, we can deal with both flash layout and disk layout, so we can evolve to a flash only layout, if you will. Okay, um, the other thing I wanted to ask about storage efficiency, I mean, yes. we, we've seen a huge explosion in being able to get just, you know, more data on whatever media that, that, that it's on. Um, you guys have thin provisioning, you've got compression. Can you talk a little bit about dedupe? You know, indeed, why, indeed. Is, why is it a compression architecture, you know, really rather than, than a dedupe, which of course, so uh, many have? Of course, so there are really two, um, two inputs into why we think about compression and thin provisioning as adequate and not why we've not gone down the deduplication path. The first is to say the biggest benefits from deduplication tend to accrue in three environments, object storage, backups, and server farms where you're cloning the boot images over and over again, right? And our perspective has been we don't address object storage. With thin snapshots, we are solving the same problem that deduplicated backups do. And in the case of server farms, typically you can use zero copy cloning to deliver the big benefits that dedupe does. In most other environments, dedupe tends to deliver between a 20 to 35% benefit, and so uh, it's not a substantial enough benefit to go after dedupe. With specifically because our system is able to deliver very high performance using low-cost drives. 
So that was the underpinning, which is given that we are already using low-cost drives, we would have to spend a lot on memory to maintain the dedupe hash tables, and the savings are going to be 20 to 30 percent, so they don't actually cost justify. Now, having said that, as you start to evolve towards systems that have very high flash content, deduplication becomes a necessary aspect of the architecture. So for us, it's not a religious argument around is dedupe important or not important. It's a question of if you're going to spend more on memory to facilitate deduplication, more on CPU, at what point does the underlying media cost reduction justify that extra expense? We, are, we came from an environment where we understand dedupe really well. Yeah, so if, if you're looking at just cost and storage in the market, I wonder if we, we can touch on cloud. Yeah. Um, because you guys are pulling the, the backup piece in-house. So you're seeing a lot of even the big storage guys are starting to use the you know AWS as a tier or you know Indeed. back up to a secondary site. Uh, I, 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 we, we talked to Rod earlier and talked about InfoSight, how yes. you are a consumer of cloud, but how, do, how does cloud storage fit into no, the No, that's a really good comment. Um, two observations. The first observation I would make is, Today, cloud service providers are a key segment driving our growth, but when we say cloud service providers, these are either SaaS companies or infrastructure hosting companies that are essentially saying, here's a virtual machine for rent, come run your application. So that's a segment that's growing very quickly for us. In that sense, it's actually driving our growth. There's a segment of the um, cloud service provider market, companies like AWS, companies like Google, companies like Azure, that are not necessarily deploying our infrastructure and they're taking away from data that a customer might otherwise um, place on a storage system, right? Now, typically the way we think about it is most of the data that's going onto public clouds is what I describe as eventually consistent data, so archives, backups, and so on. It's not necessarily appropriate for transactional data. In transactional data environments, you still need an engineered storage system like ours. So you, you nailed it on the uh, you nailed it by saying over time should backups live in a public cloud? We think so, and is that a direction that at the right time we would pursue? Absolutely, that makes sense for us to consider as the way we would solve the backup challenge. Um, we'd still want to leverage the way we approach snapshots, but perhaps think of the cloud as an infrastructure that enables us to um, use it as well. Suresh, talk about the uh, excitement. You guys are on stage, a lot of swagger here, um, confidence, a good swagger. I mean, I don't mean that in a <laughs> negative way. Um, but for customers, how do you boil it down for the customers? How do you take this excitement? Share with them kind of why, what, what is going on? What's so important right now from the customer standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. The, f the first comment I would make is like, the one attribute of the company that I hope we never come across as demonstrating is arrogance. Um, confidence is good, arrogance is where we draw the line and absolutely that's yeah. not, so hopefully that did not come through in the way that we uh, presented ourselves. No, it did not. From a I customer's don't. perspective, um, you know, I, I have never believed more that storage architectures have to change because if you're a customer with a data center where you have lots and lots of data, moving to a flash optimized platform is radically going to change the economics of your storage. Whether it's the cost of delivering capacity, whether it's the cost of delivering performance, or the ease of data management. And so I would say if you're not contemplating what options are available to you, then you're arguably sacrificing some degree of efficiency. And it's a matter of time before that architectural shift will occur. We happen to think we've built the broadest Flash platform and that's what's driving the rapid customer acquisition, but that, to a customer, I think, evaluating your options has never been more necessary than now. Yeah, so Suresh, so speaking of that, we just came off what IDC called the worst quarter for storage that they've right. seen in many, many years. <laughs> uh, you guys have an enviable position with you know, better margins than the competition, so can, can you speak to kind of storage broadly? Uh, you know, is, is storage just in a slow decline? Can you maintain that growth as, as you, in margins as you grow bigger, bigger? How does that affect you and the channel sure. and, and storage as a whole? Absolutely, I, you know, I think, um, there are really three factors that are going on that speak to a decline in overall storage revenues. The least important of which is often called out by most of the mainstream companies on conference calls, which is that customers are sweating assets more, extending depreciation cycles. That's happening, but that's by, f I think that's the least significant reason of, of the reasons why storage is slowing for the larger vendors in particular. The two main reasons, for years we've been used to over-provisioning storage to deliver performance that applications need. Flash has come around now as an answer to that problem where you no longer have to over-provision the amount of storage to deliver the performance that application needs. So by definition, I think we're going to see a period of shrinkage where you're not going to have to spend the same on storage to meet performance requirements. And like most things in storage, when thin provisioning came, it slowed down storage uh, capacity growth and then started to go up again. So I think the first factor that's affecting the likes of EMC, NetApp, and Dell is reduced over-provisioning for performance. The second factor that's again affecting uh, some of the vendors more is the fact that eventually consistent customer data, archives, large scale content repositories, a few years ago would live on very large NAS systems. That was the best place to place those archives. 
today, increasingly, object storage systems, whether they are on-premise or in Amazon S3-like um, uh, solutions, if you will, are taking away from data that would have otherwise gone to Isilon or NetApp or others. And so that's also causing a shrinkage in revenue. I think those are factors more important than just macroeconomic slowdowns, if you will. Suresh, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I know you're super busy, um, but to end the segment, I want you to share in your own words to the folks watching, in the technology industry right now, why is it so important right now, this inflection point, and how does it compare to others that you've seen and lived through in terms of cycles? Obviously, it's a little bit bubbly on the private side, we talked about that earlier, but why is this such an exciting time? Yeah, you know, I think, um, if I think about the catalysts of change that go beyond storage, I have never seen a time where I believe databases Rules of building databases are being rewritten. Rules of how you solve security problems are being rewritten. Rules of how you address storage are being rewritten, partly because there are some fundamental enabling catalysts that have never existed before. Cloud is a catalyst that in many ways was really the enterprise manifestation of the internet era. The second big uh, enabler is semiconductor-based persistent storage, flash, um, or its follow-ons, right? And so that's the second big enabler that never has existed before. Analytics, data analytics at a scale that's unparalleled. So all of these, when you think about the underlying building blocks, it basically allows you to reimagine how you might solve a storage problem, reimagine how you might solve a security problem. And I think that's partly why enterprise Huge opportunity infrastructure, and absolutely, challenge unbelievable time. change in the data center right now. Final, final word, you know, every company has a culture. You know, Intel's Moore's Law, some people have sales cultures. What is the culture of your company? Yeah, I think there are two words that encapsulate really sort of what the culture of the company is, efficiency, and collaboration, right? And so, and, and so it's a, they, they're not sexy words, but let me describe each one. Efficiency, we are all about saying, can you be innovative in using every resource you have, whether it's in our business process, whether it's in our architecture, to the utmost potential. That's really sort of one core theme that drives us. Collaboration is all about saying, we want to build an environment and a community where people as teams deliver far more than any individual is capable of, right? And so it's about sort of hiring no jokes, but retaining talent that's really able to work cross-functionally extremely well. Efficiency and collaboration, nimble storage. You guys are on a great run, and, and the public market's keeping you honest, uh, and, and the orders are flying <laughs> in, as you say. I don't want to get you in trouble with the- Well, it's uh, a fun the, time, it's a great time. Okay, so that's yes, CEO of Nimble Storage here, exclusive coverage, this is Silicon Angle Angle, Wikibon's the Cube. We'll be right back, extracting the signal from the noise right after this short break. Thank you.